Using its Sucre's DAM 1941-12 R2R module, a quadruple linear power supply, four discrete analog audio stages, volume control, remote control, a bone-free cabinet and yet costing only slightly over $3000. That's the Jay's Audio DAC2 MK3. Last week we looked at the JS Audio CDT3 MK3 CD transport which was at a higher price category. Despite that, also the DAC on the review here, let's name it the DAC2 from here on, does have quite some resemblance with the CD transport, design wise but also where the build quality is concerned. I'll get back to that. Let's first see where the DAC2 is to be used. The DAC2 is to be connected to a line input on an amplifier using either RCA or XLR cables. The amp is to be connected to a set of loudspeakers or headphones. Then a digital source can be connected to the DAC2, like for instance a network player. That can be connected over AES-EBU, SPDIF, TOSLINK or I2S depending on the outputs of the player. I've drawn an AES-EBU cable here. Playback volume and input can be set from the front or using the supplied remote control. Since the DAC2 has several inputs, a CD player can be connected too, for instance over SPDIF. You can also connect the Toslink digital output on your TV to the DAC2 and have the TV sound play over your stereo at high quality. The DAC2 is built from thick aluminium panels. The front is even thicker than the sides, rear, top and bottom. It measures 430 by 380 by 120 mm and weighs a hefty 15 kilos. On the front right we see the volume control. By pressing it you switch to fixed output level. Further to the left the crossfeed button that reduces the channel separation in four steps for headphone listening. The DAC2 itself has no headphone output though. Then the selector that lets you choose from four different reconstruction filters. The display shows the volume settings that ranges from minus 90 to plus 10 dBs in the 1 dB steps. The input selector lets you step through the six inputs. Small LEDs show what input is active. Below that six LEDs that indicate the sampling rate active. For 44.1 kHz the left LED is lit. Multiples thereof are indicated by the 2x, 4x and 8x LEDs. The same goes for 48 kHz based sampling rates. DSD is indicated by the right LED. On the rear, three panels, from right to left for mains, inputs and outputs. The IC main socket also holds the mains fuse. The power switch above it need not to be operated after being switched on unless the DAC2 isn't used for a longer time. Otherwise it's better to leave it switched on to keep the electronics and especially the clock crystal in operational state. Then the inputs. There is a USB audio class 2 input for connection to a computer. Then there is an I2S input on HDMI. This is not suited for connection to the HDMI inputs on an AV receiver but only to an I2S output of a digital source. Then we have the AES3 inputs. AES-EBU on XLR, SPDIF on BNC, SPDIF on RCA and TOSLINK. The analog outputs are available as balanced on XLRs and single-ended on RCAs. With the top panel removed, we see left the AC EMI filters that clean up the incoming mains AC. They are separated from the rest of the DAC2 by a thick aluminium screen. Then to the four encapsulated toroidal transformers from the Dutch company Talema. Next to it the discrete linear power supplies containing Schotsky diodes, Waldtjung super regulators and other high quality components. This DAC doesn't use a DAC chip but the DAM 1941 DAC module by Sucris from Denmark. 
It holds all the inputs and is capable of sampling rates up to 384 kHz PCM over I2S and USB inputs. The AES3 inputs go to 192 kHz by design. DSD is only supported on the I2S input up to DSD256 and on the USB input up to DSD128. From the circuit board the analog signal goes to four discrete build output stages, two for the balanced outputs and two for the single ended outputs. Operating the CD2 couldn't be easier. Connect it to your amp and digital source as described at the beginning of this video, switch it on using the power switch on the rear and select the input. Then switch on your amp and set the volume on either the amp or the DAC2. Start your digital source, CD player, streamer, TV etc. and you are in business. The only option you now have apart from selecting the music to play from your digital source is to choose what reconstruction filter to use. My recent presentation at the Noir et Blanc Brussels Hi-Fi show explains about the effects reconstruction filters have on the sound. The DAC2 has four filters to choose from. Soft minimum phase filter, which is a soft butterworth filter. Linear phase filter, also called brick wall filter, the one you don't want. A mix between linear and minimum phase filter and a minimum phase filter, also called butterworth filter. I did a listening in my setup 1 where the Air AX520 amplifier drives the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on isoacoustic Gaia 2 isolators. They are connected to the amp over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The DAC2 was connected to the amp over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. The Grim Audio Mu1 digital player was connected to the DAC2 over Siltec AES EBU cable. All was placed in a Creative Trend 3 rack. After the evaluation of the filters I decided on the soft minimum phase filter. The first thing that draws your attention is the royal stereo image, although that might be partly due to the very low jitter signal source. The filter choice has influence too by the way. The second thing I noticed was the excellent microdynamics. Whenever an instrument was played to stick out, whether it's a rim shot, the strumming of a guitar or timpani in a symphony orchestra, it was reproduced with the correct weight. The lows go deep and with a lot of texture. On these aspects the CD2 comes close to the chord Dave that normally does the conversion here. The difference lies in the resolution for where the DAC2 has excellent resolution for its class is no match for the Dave where resolution is concerned. That places the DAC2 between my set of 1B and 1A, closer to 1A, quite a feat for the price. I make this remark since I often get questions whether a 1000 euro piece of gear is about as good as a 5000 euro piece of gear. Recently someone asked me whether the sound quality of the Blue Sound Note 2i with S booster power supply sounded as good as the Aurelic Aries G1. There are also people that think that a 100 euro DAC from AliExpress is as good as a MyTech Brooklyn DAC since they both use the ESS 9020A DAC chip. It is good to realize that I try to judge equipment before requesting a review sample. I get input from retailers and colleagues and warn manufacturers and distributors not to let me equipment that they don't like themselves. I do this channel because I enjoy doing it. But evaluating poorly performing gear is far from enjoyment, so I try my best to avoid that. But for someone that has never heard for instance a Grim Audio Muon digital player on a matching stereo, it's hard to imagine what can be achieved with digital these days. So this time I try to explain that the DAC2 is performing very well on a number of properties, but that doesn't mean it's equally performing to a three times more costing DAC. The price in US dollars, X sales tax, is 3098. The Dutch price, including 21% VAT, is 3395 euros. That's clearly more than what Sucris charges for their DAC 
based on the same DAC module. The differences are clear though. Where Sucris uses a single switch mode power supply, Jay's Audio uses a fourfold oversized linear power supply plus four discrete output stages and has a beautifully built rigid housing. Most important, it sounds great for the money. Therefore, it rates very high in my reference setup 1B, low end setup 1A. What else is there to say than to end this video? But I'll be back next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially, especially in these times. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.